I was younger, every Christmas Eve was a pretty exciting time for me. I mean, Christmas, of course, I was very excited for, but my next door neighbors would have a party and they would have Grand Theft Auto set up for whoever wanted to play it. Now, I was pretty young at the time and Grand Theft Auto was an 18, so my mom wouldn't allow me to play those sorts of games. She was trying to shelter me from the hideous reality of video game violence. And, I mean, it makes sense. GTA is full of drugs, foul language and, um, you know, prostitution as well. But she allowed me on the Christmas Eves to play as long as she was watching me and as long as I didn't do any missions and I drove around like a good citizen, stopping at red lights and everything. And believe it or not, I still had very fond memories about playing GTA, even though I never did any of the missions. I just really wanted to get a nice bike and I was proud that I was really good at stopping at red lights. <laughs> this is because games are so much more than just that. They've been a massive part of my life for the longest time. They taught me maths when textbooks left me bored and extremely confused. They helped me bond with my dad over his love of racing cars as we competitively played Colin McRae. But best of all, these video games offered me new worlds to escape to, when the world around me became really difficult to understand. And it offered me new characters to form bonds with, who actually really helped me when I was going through some really hard times and I felt like I couldn't talk to anyone in my real life. Hurry back! I'm going to miss you. And now that I'm older, I mean, not much has changed. I'm still playing video games. I am still super excited for Animal Crossing because that was a massive childhood game of mine. And I even keep in contact with old friends through playing video games with them when it's difficult to stay in touch with them otherwise after we've all kind of left school and education and moved on our own paths. I even freaking work in the games industry, so yeah. Video games have always been a massive part of my life and they have been such a positive influence on who I am today. But I know that I'm not the only one that feels this strongly about video games. Kids love Minecraft! So I went to Insomnia to find out why other people love games and how it has impacted their own lives. Get your questions out. Well, get my get your questions, questions, questions out. Get out. <laughs> I'm still okay. recording, by the way. I hope this, I hope this photo nice gets in. Fact. So I guess it's time for me to get, get your questions get out. My questions out. <laughs> what does gaming mean to you in three words? Um, three words. Immersion. That's the first one. Fun, friends, trolls. <laughs> Escape, enjoyment and fulfillment. Community, I think. It means community, connection and entertainment. Interactive entertainment. Challenge. And and stories. Oh, that's so cute. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to take this opportunity to apologise personally to anyone who I may have uh, made to feel slightly uncomfortable with my awkward questions and responses. Anyway, back to the questions. So, why do people play games? It's a medium in which you can completely immerse yourself, that you can become one with your protagonist or with and explore the world in their own skin. It's kind of the ultimate art form, I guess. It's like just wanting to watch a movie, for me. But you actually get to be a part of that experience, and I don't think that's something that you kind of grow out of. A virtual world where you can do whatever you want, whenever you want, and you can just have a great time doing it. We met playing Team Fortress 2. Yes, we did. Apparently over 10 years ago, by the way. Apparently. I haven't got the date in my calendar. It was, it was free to play for a weekend. I was like 15 at a time, and I joined the server, and these guys were like super nice. So, I mean, yeah, but, so I immediately like, favored to the server, and then, and then I purchased the 
TF2 after that weekend, and we'd always go on that server. We played in a team together, yes. uh, and we had, <laughs> and then we I stopped. Yes. But yourself and a bunch of the other members of our team continued. Yes. And um, and a lot of them went on to be professional Overwatch players. Well, well paid competitive video competitive gamers. Competitive video gamers. Uh, yes. Not so, bitter. Not bitter. Not bitter. Not, uh, <laughs> not bitter whatsoever. I mean, you guys got to form a beautiful friendship. We did get to form a beautiful I mean, I mean it, so you, it's been a long time. That's why. Right. You live many, many miles away. Yeah, I live, I live like near Manchester. But we are connected through our love of video games. Yes. Uh, as, as I always say. <laughs> Rolls off the tongue. <laughs> yeah. Our love of video games. Yes, yes. Is he hitting them with bottles? He's hitting yeah, them with bottles. It's just like, like, What do you think about the current state of virtual reality? What? The current state of virtual reality? Yeah. It's hard to aim. <laughs> so games can help beautiful friendships be formed, apparently. They can also be a great source of entertainment. But what makes a game more than just a game? What makes a game worth investing time into? A game that's more than just a game, I think, is a game about characters and a game about the stories of those characters. If you can really lose yourself in it, then you kind of cross that border of I'm just playing the game to it's a real experience. It's about having a something in the game that means that I'm invested because my actions will have a knock-on effect on something or someone else. No spoilers, but the character died and I was just like, probably cried. So the first game I think I ever fell in love with probably was uh, Star Wars Rogue Squadron. Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. Probably played it younger than I should have, but you know. The Lion King on the Sega Mega Drive. I used to be able to play that through like every button until the end of the to finish when I was like really little. I suppose the biggest one, obviously, is Beyond Good and Evil. Tomb Raider that I played at the age of, I think it was five, and I think it was Tomb Raider 2 that I played. Because I was quite young, I loved the movie, it was part of like growing up for me, um, so yeah, I think I really like wanted it out. So I'm playing Simpsons, it's amazing. It's just the general sort of the story of the game and getting to know different characters, different worlds. I guess I just love the fact that that world kind of invited me to be a part of it, to kind of take part literally in the, the story and the worlds that was happening within that universe. It was just so amazing to me, you know, all those vast levels and like the world that you could be visiting. For me back then, it was basically an open world game, which is maybe a little bit funny considering, considering what we call open world game now, but it was so amazing to me. I fell in love with it because it was so immersive. It was the first PC that we had and we had a air flight stick and the game is, is about flying X-Wings and whatever around doing Star Wars missions and all the ones from the films and it was it was like flying an X-Wing, like it was it was awesome. It was so uh, so much more than what I thought games could be. That all seems really positive, but what's a gamer's view on violence in video games? I mean, there are a lot of games where shooting is a main mechanic, so can that actually seep out and cause violence in the real world? Even if it is correlated, it probably doesn't mean anything. Um, I mean, there are so many video games that have nothing to do with violence. Uh, and there are so many violent video gamers that have no interest in real violence. It has no relation at all to what people do. <laughs> uh, if anything, it, it helps people, it calms them down, it keeps them focused on what they want to do. It's not, uh, you know, a translation of something that you actually want to do in real life. It's just kind of, you know, a moment to kind of switch your brain off and kind of get involved with these characters because that's what those characters would do. It's not what you would do, it's what they would do. People have been saying that kind of thing for years and years and years. It goes way back to the 80s when people started playing Dungeons and Dragons and parents got scared that their kids were like worshipping Satan just because they're playing Dungeons and Dragons. So I'd like to think it's just a similar vein to that and then it will just pass, but it does keep kind of coming back up. But personally, I think it's down to the individual more than the game. That's such a good perspective. I never thought of it like that. It's my halo Thank you very much for just giving us these insights to, to new worlds and to different people, to different ways of thinking, and for actually broadening 
our minds and our opinions. Because I think that's really important, and I think that's one of the greatest gifts that games give us, really, is being able to experience other people's ways of thinking, I guess, and being in their shoes. So cheers, everybody, who did that. First and foremost, I would like to say good job, because like you did something truly amazing. And I might be speaking to a particular developer in my mind, but that goes to all the de developers out there. You did a great job. You made a colossal job in shipping such an ambitious project, because no matter what game you're working on, it is it involves a lot of work, which sometimes don't, doesn't really go appreciated as it should. So, well, good job and like keep on doing what you're doing if you love it. Thank you for 15 years of content and still coming out with new stuff and still keeping it fresh. Not mentioning any games in particular, but I'm a little bit obsessed. God damn, good job. Uh, creating a world that has so many consequences, there's, so, there's just so much to it. You can play the same game a thousand times and it will be different every single time. Uh, and that amazes me. That's super, super good. Good job. Great. Do, it, do it again. <laughs> Please, do it, do it again. <laughs> Ultimately, it was just awesome to hear why people love video games. And even though there are so many different types of video games out there, um, with different genres. It was so lovely to see the friendships that have been made through online gaming. And the excitement and the happiness that it brings to so many people. At the end of the day, it's an art form, it's another entertainment platform. But because of the interactivity that it provides, it's so much more. So yeah, maybe every now and then, video games might be seen as something negative. It allows people to explore a whole new way of living. It allows people to become a hero, a villain, a pirate, a whale, a llama? Probably. I'm gonna try and see if I can find a game about a llama. I'm sure you can be a llama in a game. But the point is, is that that's not who you are in real life. And sure, maybe it might spur some people on in some way or another. Just like films can. There's horror films, there's gory films, but at the end of the day, it brings so much more positivity than negativity. And I just wanted to make this video, this cheesy ass video, to represent my love of video games and what it's brought to me and also just celebrate how it's changed the lives of so many others as well. So anyway, I would love to hear why you love gaming, what you love about it, what's your favorite game or your favorite moment. Please write it in the comments. It would make me just really happy to read about it. Thank you for watching and have a lovely day or evening. Bye. I came back last time, last year, and there was a pack of full jammy dodgers on my desk. And I was like, who's brought this over? Jammy dodgers? I don't even know. And then immediately I was like, zero. 100% zero has brought these jammy dodgers. I was looking after my boy. <laughs> and then Krispy Kreme donuts as well. If you're his friend, it'll provide you with Krispy Kreme donuts. Everyone's I love like, how you guys call each other by your like username. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we've always done that. But I think that's the same for many people. Yeah, I would never call him Tom. It just doesn't sound right to me.